1910, a German émigré of not insignificant lineage decided to buy a small corner of a London slum to build a hotel. It wasn't without foresight or lack of experience. He'd made his way up in the industry and even owned his own premises not a mile away. But he knew he could create something finer, even something groundbreaking. His name was Otto Richard Goring, and his hotel, still in the family today, is one of the finest in the world. Of course you know it. It made headlines when the Duchess of Cambridge, then Catherine Middleton, stayed here before her wedding. But its reputation has been made in the century it's been standing. It became a city icon to the landed aristocracy almost as soon as it opened, for its proximity not only to the newly opened Victoria Station, but to Buckingham Palace, itself built coincidentally on the site of the former Goring House. And this connection to the royal family has long been tied with its history. No surprise then that the Goring is the only hotel to have been granted a royal warrant by Her Majesty the Queen. A comfort to kings and princes, of foreign dignitaries and the captains of industry. It's easy to see how one can feel at home here. Little surprise then, it's become a favourite of ours at the Arbiturian, though some of us have made it more of a home than others. Cup of tea, old chap. What sets the Goring apart is that it has innovated from the outset. It was the first hotel in Europe to have a private bathroom and central heating in each room. One of the first to have a completely automated lift, though somewhat temperamental. And many new technologies were embraced. It even had a vacuum cleaning system made up of a network of pipes with links in each room. A history of innovation, certainly. But what has defined the Goring throughout its hundred odd years is that it is quintessentially English. And there's one thing that embodies this tradition. One thing that makes it really special. This is the Royal Suite. Located on the top floor of the hotel, it's a penthouse, naturally. The drawing room opens out to the balcony, overlooking the spacious private garden, which is as big as the Centre Court in Wimbledon. The design that the hotel has undertaken in this, its latest incarnation, floor by floor, room by room, surely culminates in these few rooms. The brief, the English country house. But Twee, this most certainly is not. Sumptuous, tactile, classic with a capital C. This is the epitome of taste, the apogee of sophistication and the embodiment of British craftsmanship. Individual handmade pieces of man-born furniture adorn each room. The walls are lined with woven Gainsborough silks. This particular pattern in the master bedroom is the same as that in the first-class dining room on the Titanic. And in here, it's the same design as the throne room in Buckingham Palace. Do you mind? Sorry, old boy. Rather fitting, don't you think? For all the finery, it's also meant to be fun. For the Goring, you're encouraged to feel at home. Take this bathroom, for example. It's so designed so you can liberally splash about to your heart's content. One can get carried away, like the top-end executive who dialed down to reception to complain. One of my ducks has sunk. It's very much a sense of fun. Where in the world can you shower with Queen Victoria? And there are elements of this English eccentricity, this idea of fun, all over the royal suite. Many of them are hidden away to be stumbled upon. This drawer, for example, features a letter from Princess Beatrix from 1866. Or here, it's an order of service from St George's Chapel. Or, ooh, I couldn't possibly say. And if you're wondering what's in this box, it's a gift to every guest of the Royal Suite. Bespoke letterhead from the Wren Press, the Queen's Own Stations. The idea that you should feel at home in the Royal Suite is embodied in its layout. In fact, suite is an understatement. It's more like an apartment. Two bedrooms, two bathrooms, a drawing room, and here a dining room. Complete with its own means of entertainment. That's a charming piece, Stills. What is it? Chopin, Nocturne in B-flat. It's lovely. Oh, I'm not playing it. It's the soundtrack to this film. Unique, isn't it? And there's not a lot of hotels you can say that about. Interesting, certainly. Entertaining, absolutely. Luxurious, well in this case, right down to its very silk walls. But if there's one thing that sums up the Goring, it's that quintessential English luxury. 
and there's just that suit song of eccentricity to it. Never more fittingly described than by the guest who after a particularly heavy night remarked, if you wake up with a sheep in your bed, it can only be London and it can only be the Goring.